Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. Blower fouls, they've got to be the most discussed and argued about component on any turbo car. And some of the most common questions are, what does a blower foul do? Will it make my car go faster? Should I recirculate or vent to atmosphere? And our favorite, can I install one on a non-turbo car? So today we're going to answer all those questions. And maybe even a few more. We decided the best way of finding out what blower fouls do is to go to the people that actually design and make them. This is Brett, and he's the technical guru at Go Fast Bits, Australia's leading manufacturer of turbo bits that make you go fast. I could talk for hours on the subject of uh, blow-off valves, but essentially, if we break it down into a nutshell, it's an essential piece of equipment on um, pretty much any turbocharged car. When you are on boost and you snap the throttle shut, all that air that's going through your pipes, it hits the throttle, it's got nowhere to go, so the valve opens up to uh, create a relief path. Without a blow-off valve, you can get very high pressure spikes when the throttle shuts. The air can go back out through the turbo, which makes that characteristic Ooh, doo, 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 doo. sort of fluttering, dosing, chirping noise that everybody uh, has heard about. Um, so it's actually the blower valve's task to prevent that from happening. What a lot of people don't realise is that factory turbo cars have been fitted with uh, a blower valve of sorts since the early 90s. Um, technically, I guess the correct term would be uh, diverter valve, aftermarket valves. What most people would fit them for is to hear that signature turbo whoosh sound. You can also improve throttle response by um, uh, venting the air a little bit more discriminately. Factory ones tend to just let it all go no matter what. Um, by setting up the valve correctly you can actually improve throttle response and reduce lag a little bit by um, only venting the amount of air that you need to. With the rate the turbos spool up these days, um, the spool rate is not such an issue. It's actually how much pressure you can maintain in the intercooler during a gear shift while the throttle is closed. If a valve allows you to adjust um, that little bit of back pressure in the intercooler, suddenly that large volume that you've got in your piping and your intercooler core can actually be a reservoir for a little bit of boost pressure. So when you crack the throttle open, you're actually starting from a higher boost pressure. So instead of the you know, starting from zero, you're spooling from three, four or five PSI. So you get to peak boost quicker during a gear change. In our experience, venting to atmosphere and venting, uh, recirculation venting, uh, we don't see any performance differences. You wouldn't expect to because when you're, when you're on boost and you're on the throttle, the throttle's open, the valve should be shut. So it doesn't matter whether it's venting to atmosphere or recirculating, the air's not going anywhere through that valve because it should be closed. So theoretically you should see no performance change whatsoever. Theory is one thing, but we want to see for ourselves. So we're going to run the mighty GTI on the dyno with a variety of blow-off valve setups and see what happens. The mighty GTI runs a Revo tune with a bar of boost, a full turbo back exhaust, a pod filter and an upgraded Audi TT diverter valve to deal with the added boost of the Revo tune. We're going to do a few runs to get a baseline for comparison. Okay, so we're getting 105.3 kilowatts, so now it's time to change to an aftermarket fully recirculating blow-off valve. This time we're getting 106.1 kilowatts, almost exactly the same. Now we're switching to a GFB atmospheric venting valve. There's no significant change in power. As long as the valve can handle the boost pressure, then performance should be the same. This is the original GTI diverter valve. It's about 10 years old and showing signs of wear. 
Most factory valves are not designed to handle extra boost that's often run in modified cars. Look at what happens to our boost. With an old leaking valve, you're literally throwing your power away, which Brett demonstrates in technical terms. The dyno graph is pretty consistent, except the stock GTI valve, which is represented by the brown line. A big thanks to Brett from GFB and the guys at the edge, and now it's time to delve into the most controversial question surrounding blow-off valves. Okay, so we've been to the dyno, now it's time to answer the most controversial question of all. Can you run a blow-off valve on a non-turbocharged car? Now it's really important to remember that people who invest in turbocharged cars, they pay more for insurance, they pay more for servicing, they get in more trouble with the police, so having a blow-off valve is almost like saying, I'm part of the turbocharged gang, and the blow-off valve is like a badge that says, hey, I'm really into my car. And a lot of people with non-turbo cars want a taste of that sweet turbo badge. We're back at GFB's workshop and brainstorming ways of getting a valve to work on a naturally aspirated engine. We've come up with an idea, so we're going to bench test our design first to see if we can get it to work. Okay, back to the Mighty Mods garage. We're using a heap of leftover parts from other projects. Intercooler piping, an old car battery, pneumatic solenoids, tyre inflators, clamps and heater hose make up our contraption. We're installing it on the very non-turbo Daihatsu from our Season 1 premiere. Black bonnets are very last year, black quarter panels are the new fashion. We're installing it in the engine bay with an air compressor attached to the battery. A switch under the clutch operates the contraption and we've got a manually operated switch for extra bob action at a standstill. Don't forget to tighten the rock nut. We've been joking about this for a long time, we've actually done it. So there's a lot of argument, people saying you can run a blow-off valve on this car, you can't run it on that car, you can actually run it on anything you like, as we're about to demonstrate. With the blow-off valve even working on a push bike, it's time to lay the argument to rest once and for all and forget that it ever happened. Martin, correct me if I'm wrong, but we've just shown everybody how to put a blow-off valve on their high-end IXLs. Oh, crap.